Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's, uh, it's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing and I'm joined by the one and only Dale Nichols in his night trainers. How are you doing Dale? Yeah, not bad. Yeah. You alright mate? I might yeah. put my night trainers on in a minute. <laughs> are you sure they're yours? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, they're, some I've had off. Right then, uh, I think we've now that we've done the uh, the Tyson Fury uh, debate and we've covered Joshua enough, aren't we? I think we'll uh, we'll have a chat about the, the weekend's uh, listen to Stig's listening to Stig's. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Stig. It's just a bit of banter. Stig can take it. He's uh, he's a good man. Right, uh, let's talk about this weekend's boxing. This video will obviously go out probably after that. So let's try and get a prediction right. I'm going to go for Josh Warrington on points. I'm going to go for Josh Warrington in a mid-range stoppage. I think he'll overwhelm Galahad. Flurry of punches once he's worked out the awkwardness in the early rounds. I think he'll force a stoppage anywhere between 7 and 10. So you're going to go for Josh Warrington? Mid to late stoppage. Referee will stop in after a flurry of punches. Right. Josh Warrington, uh, round six. Well, I'm going to go for Josh Warrington on points. I think he just, he's got, he, I think he's been in with the better people. Don't forget, when, when, you, when we look at Galahad's record, right, who is his best win? It's like a who's who a D class, isn't it? Who is Kid Galahad? Well, well, I like to call people by the proper name. His proper name is Abdul Barry, Barry Awad. So this kid Galahad, it's not his name. It's like Steffi Bull's proper name is Andrew Bullcroft. But for some reason he's calling himself Steffi Bull. It's like me going around saying I'm called Porky Corner. Joshua and all me. Anthony Joshua's name is Ola Femi, Ola Wan Simi or something, isn't it? Something like that, isn't it? His name's not Anthony Joshua and Steffi Bull's name's not Steffi Bull, it's Andrew Bullcroft and Kid Galahad's name's Abdul Barry Awad. I mean, Josh Waddington's name, what's his name? Let me have a look. His name's uh, Josh Waddington. <laughs> So Josh Warrington's out of fashion if he's called Josh Warrington, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, Russell Hartley's called Porky Corner. <laughs> hey, do you, do you know what I mean? Uh, so Josh Warrington's is called Josh Warrington. He's fighting Abdul Barry Awad. So well, why is he calling his same kid Galahad? Does it, I don't get that, do you? It's uh, it's pretty strange, it's pretty strange and everybody seems to have a different name, don't they, these days? Uh, but, let's look at the fight as a whole. The last six fights, combined records for Josh Waddington are added together 166 16 and 5. Now the last six for Kid Galahad is 96, 54 and 6. Fucking hell! How has he got his set of world title fight? Drug cheat as well. Mm, yeah. Two year drug ban reduced to 18 months. Yeah, he's, done a couple, he's had a couple of fights uh, sniffing around Hearn in here, and I think Hearn and the IBF are pretty close and. Yeah. Right, let's have a look at Josh Warrington's last six. So he left Eddie Hearn, right? Uh, Josh Warrington, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. He, on, a Lee, on an Eddie Hearn show, right? He, uh, he fought Hashishi 
and my gas are 30, 5 and 2. That was on a Sky show. Where was that? That was on a Sky show. When? Uh, when? Was it uh, 2016, oh. Easter Saturday. What? Where, where was where was? Leeds. Leeds, okay. First direct arena, sell out, Josh Warrington, uh, Amagasi for the WBC International Featherweight title. Stewie Hall against Rodrigo. Was he that the tough Japanese kid, was it? Hey? That Amagasi, was he the, cha the Japanese kid? Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, he's uh, Jap Japanese, Tokyo. What was uh, his record at the time? His record at the time was. Uh, 30. Let's have a look. 30, 5, and 2. So that's not a bad record, is it? No. And Josh Warrington beat him on points. So well done. After that, he fought Patrick Island. Uh, 31 and 2. That was in Leeds. And that was on an Eddie Earn show. And uh, But it wasn't he wasn't the main uh, fight on the night actually. It was Luke Campbell against Mendes. Then under that you've got Tyrone Nurse, then under that you've got Gamal Yafai. And then under that you've got Josh Warnett in Highland, then Dillian White underneath that, uh, Ryan Burnett, Ramirez, uh, God, look how many fights on the show, Darren Tetley were on there, Eggington, Jake Ball, Frankie Gavin. Was Ricky Burns on that? Ricky Burns, no. Felix Cash, Reese Mould, Connor Seymour, Scott Fitzgerald, Vincent Fergenbutz, Frankie Gavin, Jake Ball, Eggington, Tetley, Burnett. White won it and Yafai, Tyrone Nurse, British title against Tommy Coyle and Luke Campbell, Tyrone Nurse's wheels now, Dennis Hobson. Beat Tommy Coyle on that card as well. Beat Tommy Coyle, but like I said, it's three years ago, isn't it? Tommy Coyle's fucking Mr. America, don't you? Captain America. 15 fights on that show. 15 fights. So if they've all had. If they've all had 100 tickets each and they've got, and they've got opponents, you're looking at 3,000 tickets there, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? 30 fighters, 100 tickets apiece, 3,000 tickets there, but it was a sellout. But Josh Warrington's done all the tickets there, but getting back to Josh Warrington, so he's had basically uh, Patrick. So he's had Amagasi, is it Patrick Hyland? Uh, Kiko Martinez, former world champion. Yeah, we agree on that, don't we? Yeah. 36 and 7. Well, That's his first fight with Frank Warren. K Kiko actually fought for a world title a couple of weekends ago. So he's still knocking around world world title level. Even though he's shot to pieces, don't he? So his first fight with Frank Warren. It's May 2017, Kiko Martinez. So basically, Frank Warren's made a statement there. He's had a sellout show. Josh has had. Uh, now has he? Yeah, he had long now. And Nick Lord Adams had a debut on that show as well. You are? It was Nick Lord Adams' debut, I'm sure of it. Kiko Martinez, sorry, right, the Kiko Martinez one against Josh Warrington was a Frank Warren show, yeah, May 2017, yeah, sorry, uh, BT Sport, Queensbury Promotions, Frank Warren, so basically, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, three, fourteen fights on the show. And it's first direct to Ian. Why do they always feel that they need 14 or 15 fights on them shows? Because basically all the kids in the area are from Leeds, aren't they? Bob Ash, you say, Tyrone Nurse. I think Reese Moulds, uh, uh, he's York, South Yorkshire, isn't he? He's Doncaster, isn't he, Reese? Uh, Reese Mould is a good kid, actually. 
featherweight, he's 11 and 0, 24 year old. Uh, he's not beat anybody who we're winning record yet, though. Apart from one guy who will want to know. But uh, getting back to Josh Warrington, looking at it, looking at this here with Josh Warrington, I think he's done well with Frank Warren, Dewdale. He's beat three world champions with Frank Warren. Frampton, I mean, oh sorry, we're getting back to Kiko Martinez, Dennis Sailor, 18 and 0, European two draws, champion. European champion. Lee Selby, world champion. Undefeated. One, one, one defeat, Addy, 26 and 1, money. Addy, because no, no, Warrington's the only one to beat him. No, he's had two defeats, Lee Selby. Oh, did he get beat early? He got beat doors? early on in his career, got yeah, robbed, he, he got did, robbed, didn't he? Didn't he? In his oh. uh, fifth fight against uh, Soma Moyinemi. Yeah, he got robbed in over four rounds. I think it was four rounds, yeah, he got robbed. But a lot of people in the industry said that it was a referee who made a decision, wasn't it, on that? Would and that he know. got it really, really wrong. But you could more or less say that's his first defeat, but if we go on paper, it's his second defeat, the Warrington fight. But So he took the belt off him, and... Uh, He beat, he beat Frampton and beat him one as well. Hey? Beat Frampton and beat him one. Yeah. Hang on I forgot my fucking password now for the for box rack. Oh I forgot my password. It doesn't matter anyway. Have you got uh, have you got box rack up? No. No. Uh, it don't matter, it don't matter. I wrote it down somewhere as well. But uh, we're getting getting back to that. Kid Galahad, Kid Galahad, we're not even gonna go through Kid Galahad's record because the last six guys that he's beat have been terrible. Have you have you got Roxac up now? No. Right. But like I've just said to you there, Kid Galahad. His record, shocking. He's not beat a former world champion, and like I said, his last six 96, 54, and 6. And you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not impressed, I'm not impressed by that. I'm not impressed at all by it. Uh, I think that uh, I think it's poor form, to be honest. I think it's really, really, really poor form, but uh, it is what it is, isn't it? I don't know, let's see if I can remember this. Halt, halt, five. Nope, no. I forgot me box wreck. Uh, Kid Gallant's record there. Go on, Kid Gallant's so record. Brian Marina, 10 4 and 1. Toka Khan Clary, sounds like something you get from the Indian, doesn't it? Though? Uh, 25 1 and 0. Yeah. So his last six, so we're the first one. So that's six one, two. So we'll four, five, six. Reynold Mora, seven so we'll nineteen. Look. Right, Kid Galahad's last six. Right. One, two, three, go. Ronaldo Moira, seventeen seven nineteen and one. Lionel Hernandez, ten eighteen and two. Jose Keotano. 21 and 5, Irving Berry 23, 7 and 2, Toka Khan Clary 25 and 1, um, Brian Malrena 10 and 4 and 1. Right, so when you beat a guy 10, 4 and 1 at Christmas last year, and now you're in with Josh Wanneton, 28 and 0, who's beat Frampton, Selby, and Martinez. Mm -hmm. I don't get that, do you? He's just done 36 rounds with three top guys there, hasn't he? Who's Galahad been in with? Like I said, 96 wins, 54 losses, then last six and six draws. So I'm going to go with Warrington. Win on points, Dale, what do you think? Yeah, I'm going, uh, well, 
It's like, all the things Warrington will stop him, I really do. I just think there's a I don't, else. yeah, I don't think... I mean, Kid Gallagher has he won British and Commonwealth and European. Yeah, he has, yeah. So he's won all them and it's his first stint at a world title. Ja Josh Whale thinks Gallagher wins, you know. I'm, I'm not having it, me. I just no, don't think levels. he's got the pedigree. Levels, in it, yeah. Levels. Now, he's getting well paid for Josh it. Josh Whale's probably Gallagher's best win. Josh Whale is probably Gallagher's <laughs> best win. You're probably right. Josh Whale and Yazza Dickens are probably Gallagher's best wins. Yeah. And he got Josh Whale a long time ago. So, but Josh thinks that Gallagher is not, he's, he says he's not, he's there not to be it. And on my channel a few weeks ago, and Josh thinks he wins Gallard. But I'm going to go with you, Josh Warrington, not because I like Nick Manners, uh, not because he's a Yorkshireman, because Barry's a Yorkshireman, isn't he? Although, Barry, Kid Gallard's born in Quatar, isn't he? Mm -hmm. But he's still a South Yorkshire lad. But I'm going to go for a West Yorkshire lad in Josh Warrington on work rate and the fact that I think he looks like he's really riled up for it. That's what I think. I just think he's a special talent. But he's British, Commonwealth, European and world. He's been at that level a bit longer. Yeah. And he's mixed it with top he's guys. Galahad didn't want to go near Frampton and Selby when he could have done, did he really? He's laid back and laid back and he's waited for that mandatory because I think Dominic Ingalls thought he'll not beat them and will not get paid. At least if we get a mandatory we're going to get a good purse. Yeah. And I think they've held him back, and, he, and I think he'll get beat. Yeah, I think he'll get beat, but I think he's overachieved. He might pocket. He, he's probably going to pocket about two or three hundred grand after everything, and that's that's good for him. He'll go get an house, put a few quid in bank, and he'll go again. But there's no way he beats Josh Warrington. Technically, Kid Gallard, I think he's technically very good. But we're talking of, on, an, on another day, he probably could win a world title, and they'll go again. On Sunday morning, you'll hear setbacks paved the way for comebacks, and even Ali got beat. <laughs> well, you will, won't you? Yeah. That's the knackers that they come out with, that's what it is, isn't it, basically? Pure knackers that they come out. When they get beat, they come out with knackers. It's a load of knackers. Yeah, I just don't think that Galad hits hard enough to keep Warrington off him. But people could say that Josh Warrington doesn't hit hard because he only stops six. It's not his style, though. Is but that's not style? his style. He swarms you, suffocates you, doesn't he? He's that fit, he suffocates you. And you, you, you don't get knocked out, you just get worn out, don't you? And you go to end. But I think he'll win on points and just wear him down. He's a fit kid. I don't think his style is going to last long though. He could beat him and get out. He could beat him, get out, but get out the, the boxing with a few quid. Well, they went the unification, didn't they? Before this fight, and the IBF dug their heels in and said, "No, you must fight your mandatory." Yeah. So you've got to get this out of the way before he does go off and, f and fight a unification fight. Now against the top top dogs in this division, like you know, like your Gary, Gary Russell Jr. Yeah. is one of the champions. You know, maybe he will come unstuck, but he. He's got to give it a shot, isn't it? Yeah. He's got to give it a shot, and he surprised us twice last year against the odds. And I think it's a great story. You wouldn't rule him out, would you? Who? Oh. Warrington? You just would never rule no, him out. No, listen, Josh Warrington, right? We all bought into that Frampton's a technical fighter and this and that, and Lee Selby's the, the Welsh Mayweather. <laughs> Look what he did to them. So if they can do that to them, He'll do it to Galahad, but what Galahad's got going for him is he's not been beat, he don't know how to lose, and he lives boxing. Now, technically I think he is very good Galahad, but I just think that Josh Warrington's style's all wrong for him. So I'm going to go with what Sean O'Hagan's saying, and I like him as well, Sean O'Hagan and Josh. I think it's a great story. Plus, his dad's not in every interview. Every time I turn my telly on this week, all I'm seeing is Dominic, in Dominic Ingle in, in them tight t-shirts that he wears, getting all this and eating a, t eating a stick of salary. That's all I'm seeing, Dominic Ingle walking about, tensing up, old Flex, we call him Flex here, old Flex. I'm seeing Flex walking around with his bald head. He ain't even got a good bald head, at least I can pull it off. He's walking about saying that, oh, Josh Warrington spends all his life in pubs, so what I do? What, and? What does that mean? 
Means he's one of the boys, that's why he sells loads of tickets. Mm. What's Galahad do? He, he, he ain't got no money to go to pub. He's skint. This is his biggest payday. 100%. And probably when he gets it, he probably owes it all out. This is how I look at it, right? Kid Galahad gets beat. I think he's a good fighter. And I think he'll win a world title, but not against Josh Warrington. I don't agree with Josh Whale, and I don't agree with Dominic Ingle. I think he beats him. Warrington beats him on points. I mean, look, his last six. They've had his last six opponents. He's fought. Had had 54 losses. 54 losses. Won it in his last six. They've had 16 losses. Six into sixteen is two point summer. Six into fifty-eight is uh, eight eights. Seven eights of fifty-six is nearly seven losses a man averaging. So he's fought the poorer opposition, hasn't he? Josh's last six hundred and sixty-six wins. What's that? That's like twenty-five. Tw how many sixes? Tw twenty-five sixes. 25 times 6, 26, it's nearly 26 fights. It's like 26 and 3 or something. And look at this 6, what's 6 into 96? 20, 10, 10, 15. It's like fighting guys, 15 fucking, 15 wins and 6 or something. It's, listen, at the end of the day, right, 54 fucking losses from his last 6 guys, do you know what I mean? People can say, yeah, Porky, you listen to too much box, right? We're only taking the records. We're not ranking people. We're looking at the records. 54 losses, his last six guys. Look at who Gallard's been in with in the last two years. Shockers. The shockers, aren't they? Stinkers. Nobody's saying he's not going to come, come again. He's got a lot to learn, but shockers. Yeah. It's not the preparation for a world total fight, is it? It's not the preparation for a... No. He's got a mandatory slot, and he's getting overpaid. Eddie Hearns didn't win the... If Eddie Hearns rated Kid Galahad, he'd have gone and won that purse bid money. I'm, listen, and you know I always bring this up, Dale, don't you? How many purse bids have Matchroom won in 33 years? Seven. If anybody can prove me wrong, get it up on internet. Seven purse bids in 33 years. When was the last time Matchroom won a purse bid? Couldn't tell him. They don't fucking win purse bids. Because if it looks like it's going to a purse bid, they negotiate. They don't like winning them because they like to do it on their turn. They like to know wh where they are. Accountant by name, accountant by nature. You know what they say, don't you, about accountants? You never see an accountant in a bookie. Because they don't play bets, do they? Unless it's with somebody else's money. <laughs> But no, we're going to go for Warrington on points. Dale's going for Warrington in a, in a, a KO round six, yeah? Uh, probably, perhaps a bit six, like, so I think six. anywhere between seven and ten, I think. Oh, is that, that's like having seven, eight, nine, ten. That's like having four, isn't it? You're going to go Warrington KO then, basically. Warrington stopping the second half of the fight. Se well, that's after round six now. That's six, <laughs> I've no. never said six. It's going for a Warrington, Warrington second half of Warrington. five, seven to twelve. Yeah, Warrington to stop him, yeah. I'm going to go Josh Warrington points. And Kid Galler had to come again and win a world title because he is good enough. He is good enough, but I'd like to see Kid Galahad fight uh, Josh Whale in a rematch after Warrington's done with him. I'd like to see Kid Galahad. In the Battle of South Yorkshire, uh, it'd only be Josh selling any tickets, though, wouldn't it? Because <laughs> but who wants to watch? Who wants to go watch uh, Barry Barry Awad, Kid Gallard? He he doesn't sell tickets. I don't know why. I don't know why that is. Maybe he spends all his time training because he's a gym rat than selling himself. I don't know, but maybe he should come out on social media more and sell himself. Billy Joe doesn't sell tickets though, does he? It's because he's not liked. You think it's because he's not liked? It's not liked. We like, we like his style though, don't we? No. I do. <laughs> no. People say you don't like Tyson's style, but you like he, Billy Joe's. He, he doesn't he don't step on the gas enough for me. He should have been getting that. I don't think Billy Joe. I, I want to see Billy Joe in a life and death, but 
He always fights people where it's not a life and death, doesn't he? Apart from the first Eubank fight. When have we seen Tyson in a life and death? Wild. Wilder. And that's why there's no rematch, isn't it? When have we seen Billy Joe in a life and death? Would he put his son in that situation where he's fighting Canelo? Well, I would oh, say, after, after the the, uh, the knockdowns against Andy Lee, I think he lost the fight. You think he lost from, that from, fight? From the end of round three onwards, I think the knockdowns won him, was was the deciding factor. I think without the knockdowns, yeah. I think Andy Lee won more rounds. Mm. Billy, Joe, Billy Joe squeaked on that line against Andy Lee, didn't he? Yeah. Did Andy Lee retire after that? I think he did. He not fight one more fight on some sort of undercard against an absolute nobody. He won. won out on a won out, gone out on a win. And then a bit like Nazi Mamid when he yeah. lost his belt, he came back and won IBO, didn't he? And then got out of boxing, didn't he, Nazi? Mm. Yeah, that, some fighters just don't want to go out on a lost either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can't all go out like Froch, can we? <laughs> With George Groves playing. Uh, What's that game called where you, you all go in garden and you put your legs on all different spots? Twister. Twister. George Groves were playing Twister, weren't he? With his back <laughs> leg all over the place. I used to play that when I was a kid, but... But yeah, so... Peace out, keep on trucking. Keep on supporting boxing. It's a great sport. But like I've just said, King Galahad gets beat. Uh, pretty harsh. I know but he gets beat on points and Dale's got him to get knocked out but either way he's going to get beat and if he wins well he'll have to go on his travels won't he because he doesn't sell a ticket does he but Josh beats him and moves on to bigger and better things I think Josh's trainer's better than Dominic I mean what has Dominic Ingle done with anybody from day from the debut he hasn't has he really he's just inherited the gym off his dad and he? he hasn't done anything with anybody has he really so but if Dominic wins this with Galahad well, it was Brendan who trained Galahad from the beginning, wasn't it? So that'll be another fraudulent uh, world title for Dominic because as far as I'm concerned, you've got to have fighters from day one or you don't count. So peace out, keep on trucking. A bit harsh today, aren't I, mate? Really harsh. He's sane, mate. He's sane.